Hi everyone and welcome to this introductory video to open data. I'm here with Jean Martin from WFP. Um, can you introduce yourself properly for me? Hi Alice, uh, my name is Jean Martin Bauer. Um, I work uh, at WFP's VAM unit in Rome. Uh, I've been working on MVAM for a, a few years now. Okay, great. So we often hear in the news about open data. There's lots of initiatives who are working specifically on this idea. Um, it's one of the big buzzwords, particularly in the humanitarian community at the moment. Could you explain a bit more about what open data really means? Right, it's, it's a buzzword. Um, what it means is that an organization's data is shared with the public. It's, it's really, that, that's the principle. Your data sets are shared with the public. Um, changes in IT and technology over the past few years have made open data uh, processes possible. And we've seen governments, we've seen UN agencies and other agencies move towards open data approaches. Uh, the idea is to provide data to the public as a, as a public good. Okay, and specifically with the MVAM project, how are you using open data processes? Okay, what we do is ensure that our data is available to the public. Um, so we, we produce reports, uh, we have uh, uh, data tables that are also published. Um, the way it works for us is that when data is collected, it's processed through our stats engine. Uh, we probably talk about that at another seg uh, section of the course. Uh, that data is posted onto what we call the data bank. Uh, this data bank, it, it's a big table that you find on our website with data for each country and at each uh, round. Uh, it's very detailed and uh, uh, helps you understand uh, uh, everything about the data that we have. That's available to the public. Now that data bank is linked to an application program interface, an API, uh, and that helps us share uh, our data with machines all over the world. So if you're a partner of WFP, you can hook up to, to the API and download our data at will. Oh, that's quite cool. So all these public people or the other organizations, is this meaning that you can work more closely with them considering they're able to use your data and you're able to use it automatically? Right, we've seen uh, collaborations uh, emerge around our open data approach and uh, I think one of the good examples we have is the work we've done with the Humanitarian Development uh, Exchange. Uh, it's a project of OCHA, the, the UN, uh, UN Office on, on Humanitarian Affairs. Um, they uh, built data visualizations on, on top of the um, application program interface, the API uh, that we built for, for MVAM. Uh, you can visit our website on Yemen and see a, uh, an interactive data visualization showing food security statistics in Yemen uh, over a period of over, so I think it's uh, 14, 15 rounds right now. Every month it's updated automatically. And the idea there is that the user, any user, uh, or anyone using the internet can visit our website and click through this data visualization at will. So it's making our products uh, uh, more interactive um, and more engaging for people. Uh, that was what we were able to do with, with the HDX. Uh, we see other uh, partners and other agencies download our data from the data bank or, or from the API and do their own research on the basis of our statistics. And that's something we really like to see uh, and it's made our, our collaboration uh, better with, with others, for sure. And when we're thinking about the data we're collecting with WFP, a lot of it is quite private. We're collecting demographic information. Maybe we're collecting information about whether you're an IDP or a returnee in a conflict. What do you do to assuage fears about data privacy whilst making it open and ensuring that no one's compromised? Yeah, that, what we have to do is make sure that data privacy and data security uh, remain our top priority. Uh, we are also collecting people's phone numbers. It's uh, all very sensitive. Uh, when we share data uh, through our website, all of that is aggregate data. So we don't provide any individual's statistics or phone numbers or, or, or any identifiable information. Uh, when we share our data sets with uh, third parties, like a, you know, a university or a, a project, uh, we have to go through a formal process where we sign a data sharing agreement that outlines exactly how uh, the data would be used and how it would be disposed of after the end of the agreement. Uh, but we also, when we do share a, a, a raw data set with uh, one of these institutions, uh, we need to anonymize it. Uh, and that, that, those are best practices we can adopt to uh, make sure that when we go for open data, it's responsible open data. Okay. And also the stuff we've been talking about in terms of open, dating, open data sharing, we're sharing with humanitarian organizations, we're sharing with other UN agencies, academics. It's all online, there's this API. It doesn't really sound like it's very accessible for the beneficiaries, the vulnerable people who are actually collecting data. Is there any way you're gonna try and share this information back with people who 
you've collected it from. You're right. When we look at the statistics, uh, most of our hits come from North America, Europe, uh, Asia, not really the, the, the places where most of our beneficiaries are. Uh, so we've tried to make um, our data not only open, but also accessible to the communities we, we, we work with. Um, we started doing that with uh, SMS and interactive voice response in places like the Democratic Republic of Congo and Somalia, uh, where people receive messages uh, that uh, include food price information that we collected using MVAM. Um, but we, we can take it further. And right now we're working on an interesting project uh, involving the use of Facebook's free basics. Uh, mm -hmm. It's essentially a, a mechanism where Facebook pays for a, 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 an internet connection to a series of websites that they've approved. Uh, so we're testing free basics uh, in Malawi right now. And our website uh, provides updated information on food prices for, for people in Malawi. Approximately, I think it's around 6 million people in Malawi actually have access to that website for free. Uh, and the data is updated every week. That means that uh, the data is not only staying on our server being uh, used by people in, 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 in first world countries, but we're really making it available to the communities where the data was collected from. Oh, sounds really interesting. Well, thanks so much for sharing. It sounds like we're doing a lot in terms of sharing both with organizations and it's really exciting to hear we're sharing information as well with the beneficiaries. Thanks so much for talking sure. to us about it. And um, if you'd like any more information, please visit our website and our blog where we share both the data and any stories we have about the progress we're making in terms of open data. And if you want more quick updates, then we also have our Twitter account at MobileVam. Thanks so much for watching.